This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 6, this is Section 2. Purpose Not About Action or Inaction Hi, David. I'm writing you with much hesitation and skepticism because I deeply believe that no one can ever help me find the truth. The decision to write this mail is primarily a spontaneous act. One question has always troubled me that is about action. I have seen that awareness leads to so much sensitivity that it becomes tough to act at all. And I find it very hard to distinguish between this state of inaction and apathy. Besides the practical implication of this inaction, that one needs money for living, there are some deeper implications too, like that of self-expression. With inaction, there is no action at all. Interesting, boring, no matter what kind. Is that what man is born for? How is one supposed to find out what one loves most? Is there really such a thing as self-expression at all? Why is it that so-called realized... At all? Why is it that so-called realized souls always lecture around trying to teach the world? Why is it that the Christ and the Buddha are always preachers? Why not say an engineer or a doctor? Is there an action that is not a product of thought? And is spontaneity, lack of thought, both conscious and unconscious? I think the ready-made explanation of all our problems with terms like thought no thought, consciousness, no consciousness have become so commonplace that they have very little meaning. I think that we fundamentally tend to find solace in paradoxes. Thought, no thought, theory provides us with excellent paradox to feel satisfied with. To stop questioning further. To wait perpetually to come out of it one day. How, in your view, can one find the true meaning of action? Hello, beloved one. Thanks for writing. The question is not one of action versus inaction, but always one of purpose. Discernment of purpose is very important because one's state of mind is a result of the purpose one has chosen to align with, ego or spirit. Peace of mind, happiness, freedom and contentment are not dependent on whether the body seems to be active or inactive. The spirit's perspective reveals that all apparent behavior is a dream an unreal effect of an unreal cause. Interpretation of behavior is always the ego's perception, for the ego recognizes only form and knows nothing of content or true meaning. True meaning, identity, is abstract light and the world was made to cover over the light and keep it out of awareness. An ego device for distracting away from questioning underlying false beliefs and concepts is to focus on behavior and ask endless questions about behavior. Behavior, as all of form, is the past and no meaningful questions can ever be asked about that which is over and gone. 
What one does and does not do flows from the purpose the mind has chosen to identify with. The ego uses the body for pride, pleasure and attack. The ego's purpose is to reinforce separation and protect the false belief in private minds and private thoughts. The spirit uses the body solely as a communication device. The spirit always communicates that mind is unified and that everything is connected, being one tapestry of wholeness. Apparent actions or inactivity inspired by the spirit's purpose are always helpful. Apparent actions or inactivity motivated by the ego's purpose are never helpful. Discernment is, therefore, being clear about what purpose is helpful and what purpose is not helpful. Apathy is ego-motivated. Joy is spirit-inspired. Working for a living is always ego-motivated. Trusting divine providence is always spirit-inspired. The perception of needs is always ego-motivated. The miraculous synchronous city of all things working together for good is always spirit-inspired. Real self-expression is joyful, while ego self-expression is but an attempt to reinforce an illusion that could never be. Be aware that as long as mind believes in duality, the choice of which purpose to align with Spirit or ego is a choice of which self, self, to believe is real. This moment, to be or not to be, is the choice and in the ultimate decision to accept atonement is choice undone forever. How is one supposed to find out what one loves most? Forgive the illusion and recognize that love is one and most is meaningless. Love makes no comparison for there is nothing to compare in oneness. Why is it that so-called realized souls always lecture around trying to teach the world Why is it that the Christs and the Buddhas are always preachers? Why not say an engineer or a doctor? The form may seem like a preacher or a teacher, yet the content is one spirit. A mind emptied of all false concepts is freed to recognize the self, the spirit. Forgiveness is the release of all tiny ego self-concepts. And even forgiveness must give way to the truth beyond all dreaming. Forgiveness shows the meaninglessness of fragmented perception and offers a happy dream for but a moment. You might say that this forgiven world is learned as the ego is unlearned. For the reflection of light and darkness have no meeting point. Is there an action that is not a product of thought? And is spontaneity lack of thought, both conscious and unconscious? All thought forms, opposites, including apparent action and inaction, are within the domain of the ego. A miracle is a spontaneous choice of the spirit's purpose, in which form is one or whole, and the cosmos is perceived from the spirit's perspective, 
which sees the false as false, for there is no sense of otherness. The miracle collapses time and seems to shorten the need for learning forgiveness or unlearning the ego. The holy instant is a still thought in God, which time cannot touch and in which action and inaction have no meaning. I believe deeply that no one can ever help you find the truth. This is true, for truth is the recognition that there is no other than oneself. The opening to this recognition is discernment, and only the spirit within can make the discernment of which I speak. Do not look to any body to make it for you, for there is nothing outside, and the voice for God alone can be understood. Meaning cannot be found in images, so seek not to figure out and understand what has no meaning. The recognition of self as God created self with a capital S is everlasting meaning. And nothing else has any meaning. This seeming leap of faith is but a simple recognition and this natural and obvious aha is enlightenment. <laughs>